tell me, Sami, how did you get into fashion? Uh, I started uh, in fashion working as a model. I mean, I started in Rio in Brazil, but I did one single shooting there uh, with Michel Comte, a very famous uh, photographer from Zurich. He was shooting uh, Luomo Vogue in Brazil, and that's how I became a model. So after this, I moved to Milan, and I've been traveling ever since. End of 2002, I mean, it makes 10 years now already. <laughs> different cultures and having the chance to work with artists, designers from all over the world and uh, business people also from all over the world really brought me this, this influence in the work and even the things I choose, the colors, how I split the collection. I think that it's all connected to this experience. I mean, I think that without the modeling I would never have had the interest doing anything else in fashion. That's how it all started. Edzo is uh, a time on a factory and opened in uh, 1908. So it's like the, the first time on a factory from Berlin. Uh, handmade products, uh, silk uh, carefully produced in Italy and so on. Uh, back then, I mean the whole uh, wardrobe for men was much different. So talking here about a period where men would wear uh, ties, uh, bow ties every day and change shirts three, four times a day. That's what the uh, day-by-day life uh, was. And so the, the company was a huge manufacturing that has been changing and suffering uh, uh, transmutations, we can say, all over the, the years because, I mean, the 20s came and this cabaret uh, influence in Berlin, the art, the art deco, and then the Nazis, the war, the after war, you know, the hard times when no one in the world wanted to wear uh, uh, something produced in Germany because we're talking here about a huge uh, matter, you know, for, for the time. Uh, long story short, uh, I came to the company. So, Sammy, tell me more about how you went from modeling into designing. This was very spontaneous. I mean, we didn't plan that I would be doing uh, the design at Edsor. This was something that just happened. I started doing a modeling job when the company opened the first uh, shop and shop at uh, Galerie Lafayette in Berlin and uh, I was there doing basically the image of the company and then I started getting more and more information about the history uh, what they used it to do in the golden periods of Berlin uh, in the 20s and the 30s and how the war changed the history of the manufacturing itself and how people would change their way uh, into doing business of fashion, you know, and all these transitions. And today, I mean 2012, and all the different things we have to do to improve and, um, and keep ourselves in the market, offering a nice product and so on. And I found it was a very interesting experience for me. Uh, to see how uh, an old uh, history can become an up-to-day uh, thing. I mean, this was the interesting thing in this project, was starting something extremely nice, trying to, to improve, to sell more, but to learn with, with the clients and observe how we could change this whole uh, look of being elegant today and what to men need today in their wardrobe and so on and that's how we arrived at this point. I mean that means it took me one year to really uh, know that I would be doing the design. I mean I've been involved in the different things in the company from cleaning the shop to selling the things and you know in every day you discover something else and that's it you know that's that's the the opportunity of learning something more and uh, yes the challenge you know <laughs> so you think that uh, through your knowledge of what you, the people that you worked with and what they're doing you also understood what men are looking for and what is missing on the market 
I don't know if I understood, but I'm trying to understand. I mean, it's like fashion today has much to do with your capacity to understand what people want, you know? And this, the globalization, the speed of information and all this, it definitely changed the way and the, the speed that people will see the world. And that means you need to do in design something that makes total sense with this spirit we are living. So is it very different to do accessories for women and for men? How does the market work? It is definitely different because um, a woman you can play with many different things. I guess for women the difference is that girls have uh, different colors of lipstick, different different earrings, uh, rings, and uh, shoes, high heels, flip flops, and all different things that you can put feminine elements and use it as uh, an accessory for women. In the case of uh, men, it's definitely different, you know, uh, and that's also why I thought that the, the tie would be something interesting to discover, you know. To, to understand because this is one of uh, uh, the few accessories that men normally use even the classic uh, you know, the lawyer the doctor and people who wouldn't wear uh, rings and so on they will wear a tie you know maybe every day some others not every day uh, others they're gonna wear it in a very special moment of their lives, uh, the end of college, uh, the first interview for a nice job, and that's what I found interesting, because that's an accessory that had something to do uh, with the day by day of many people, uh, but also this one special day of a life of many other ones, you know, and that's when I think the tie has uh, a connection with older and also younger uh, men. So you're designing for all generations, it's not only... Yeah, I mean, we do, uh, we do a huge collection, uh, but uh, we don't have one single tendency in the collection. I mean, we're using now, of course, technology helps, and now you can mix the, the, the silk with uh, cotton and with a line and, and many different uh, textures to achieve uh, different things and different... Uh, expressions of color but I mean uh, the important is that you split a collection uh, for a different kind of consumer you know because so something for accessory this sort of thing you also have to analyze strongly what's going on in the market I mean I cannot propose to do nice ties and sell it if I don't understand uh, what's going on in the world in terms of shirts, uh, suits, you know, you really have to do research, you know, to understand what you're going to produce, what you're going to create, you know, because it's, it's, uh, it's a work of creation and research at the same time. That means you need to give yourself freedom to, to have an idea, but you also have to let the ideas from, from your environment come, you know, otherwise you don't... Uh, you really don't touch people with what you do, you know. So what is your collection inspired by? So this is the first, uh, uh, that's my the first collection, although I already did two uh, uh, special editions. Uh, we concentrate ourselves this year in the Art Deco, you know, how to transform um, mm, this black and white, black, white and beige, and old designs of uh, artists from the 20s, unknown artists from the 20s into something for our wardrobe today, you know, and this is a huge uh, uh, inspiration for me this year, but you know, this is uh, called this collection and I think, I guess, it's always gonna be like this, um, it's an expression of different moments, I mean, it's something I see here in Paris, the nature, maybe an exposition I go, but everything all mixed. You know, it's different. Of course, it's much less complicated than doing uh, dresses and uh, the fitting and all those things. I think the tie is something more, it's more simple, it's, it's, it's a different kind of, of design as well.
time. I always come to I Paris. I think Paris uh, is a very, very interesting city. I mean, it's a beautiful place, and I like the mixture of uh, cultures and uh, the purple. It's why people come to Paris: business, fashion, uh, tourism, and I think it's a very, very nice uh, mix in a very old town. What about um, what's Edzer? Like, how is Edzer in this new market? That's a good question because that's the main ch uh, challenge that I think most of important uh, fashion houses uh, cross today. Because uh, besides the speed of uh, information, the internet, the online uh, uh, sale, and all these things. There is a bunch of other requests from the market and from the, the new sort of clients that, that uh, we have also that make you think, okay, so if I don't modernize the work now, uh, what are we going to do next? I mean, are we going to be able to do anything else next? Because that's the thing, you know, only with quality and taste you don't make good business. I mean, that's, uh, that's the truth. So. I think that today what I see in the most successful uh, fashion industries from friends of mine and people I meet uh, around the world is definitely when people know how to, to, to combine the design division, the creation, the creation department with the commercial. I mean when these two uh, uh, divisions of a single company work in a very modern way and can interact and uh, exchange. Uh, without big big trouble and that's what I observe as the main uh, point on the big big names of fashion today So how do you think uh, Edser will be placed in the market and what are you are you doing to help them? Uh, in the case of Edser, I know we talk here about a much smaller uh, company, it's more like an in-house atelier and this whole uh, a homemade thing. I mean, the structure of the company is not the same from the 20s. It's a different uh, situation. It's a different period of, of history. We have in the archives, we have these huge books from the 40s, the 30s, uh, until actually the, the, the beginning of the 70s. We have all advertisements, you know. And then you see, when you analyze the how much you need to change uh, uh, and how much you need to criticize yourself strongly in what you're doing, to achieve a better, a better work, especially when it has to do with creativity. Today I talked to Sami Voigt, Brazilian German model who has been living all over the world and who is now the new fashion designer and art director of Edsor. I'm very looking forward to seeing the results of the new collection and I wish you the best of luck, Sami. Thank you. To be loving you